thank you for the introduction. Um, I should also note Peter Reich, uh, professor at the university, who works with me a lot on a lot of these things. So I'll give him some credit as well. So I'm going to talk about um, change, global change, climate change, and the invasive species are coming at the same time, and what that means for forests in Minnesota. Um, a lot of people think global warming is a recent phenomenon, but actually, Svante Arrhenius, a Swedish scientist, came up with the greenhouse effect theory in 1896. And in, in 1905, he published a paper where he predicted how much the atmosphere of the Earth would warm up if we doubled the CO2 content of the atmosphere. And he said, he calculated in 1905 that it would be 3 to 5 degrees Celsius, which is about 6 to 8 degrees Fahrenheit, if we doubled the CO2 content of the atmosphere. And now we've spent billions of dollars. We have all these fancy computer models and guess what the latest prediction is? Three to five degrees Celsius. We're still predicting the same thing that he predicted in 1905. And he all, of course, there were no calculators or anything like that. He had paper and pencil, but he was a Swede, and all Swedes are 100 years ahead of the rest of the world, I guess. <laughs> um, but it's amazing what he was able to do. Uh, and he even got it right that it would warm up more at the poles than at the equator in 1905 with paper and pencil. So this is nothing new. We've known since 1905 that increasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere would warm the climate of the Earth. And these are some of the, of the modern projections. One of the things that the modern models do which Arrhenius was unable to do is kind of map out the regional distribution of temperature and rainfall. And this is one, one of those projections. And as you can see here, this is summer, June, July, and August average temperature um, relative to 1960 to 1990 for the year 2090 to 2099 for the ICCP high emission scenario. They did high emission, which is essentially business as usual. We keep emitting as much CO2 as we have been. And then they also did a low emission scenario if we're actually successful in cutting the amount of CO2 we put in the atmosphere. Well, this is the high emission scenario in summer temperatures, and this is degrees Celsius here. So this is 8 degrees and 7 degrees Celsius, which is about 14 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than it is now. Um, and for most of Minnesota, seven or eight in the dark red and the really dark red. And then for precipitation for summer, the blue here actually indicates less precipitation than we have now. The darkest blue here is minus 25%. So if the summers are 14 degrees warmer and we get 25% less rain, that makes our climate about equal to Kansas City, which is right down here. Um, so by 2099, um, it, with a business-as-usual scenario, we could be as warm and dry as Kansas City. And this is going to cause major changes in our forests, of course. And this slide just depicts that summer. Minnesota would be like Kansas. In the winter, it would be like um, northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. So um, winters are not... We don't think winters will warm up as much as summers, but summers are what's really important for trees, right? I mean, when trees are dormant, it doesn't matter a heck of a lot what happens. You know, they don't care if it's zero or 20 below zero, but whether it's 80 or 100 in the summer, they care a lot about that because that's when they're growing. So what do trees do when the climate changes? Well, they don't adapt to the warmer climate, they migrate. And this is historical data from the fossil record showing how species of trees have migrated in the past when the climate changed. Um, and these are thousands of years before present. So this is spruce. 15,000 years ago, the northern edge of its range was here in Virginia, Ohio, and Indiana. And there were still glaciers up there and it was migrating north. You can see it reached Duluth 11,000 years ago and so on. And the shaded 
area here is the range of spruce today. The southern edge of the, of the or the northern edge of the range of spruce reached this area 13,000 years ago. Now the southern edge of its range is to the north of us. So it was here, and as the climate warmed, it migrated north. That's what, how, what trees do. They track the climate that each species prefers. And white pine is shown on the right side, and it hung out in Virginia during the peak of the glaciation. Then as it warmed up, it went up to New England and then came out to Minnesota. And you can see here, it's been moving westward. It arrived in Itasca State Park only 2,000 years ago because you have to remember that we're in an interglacial and the peak of the interglacial was 7,000 years ago. And we reached our warmest temperatures of the interglacial 7,000 years ago, and the natural trend since then has been to a cooler climate. You know, until that was interrupted by global warming caused by people, it's been a cool, the climate's been cooling for the last several thousand years, and that's why white pine's been able to migrate further out onto the prairie, because it's been getting cooler and wetter. So trees migrate. So where might they migrate in the future? Well, here's, a, here's an example. This is black spruce. It's a very important tree in northern Minnesota. Even though it's cut off here, the Canadians made this map, and they don't know the United States is here, so they cut it off. Um, but we know black spruce grows in Minnesota. So there's where it is currently, and this is where it would be with a doubled CO2 climate and about a 300-mile migration. The, the problem with this is trees can't migrate very fast. It takes trees about 2,000 years to migrate 300 miles. And we're thinking that this climate change will occur in just 100 years. You know, um, trees are not birds. They can't fly. Um, the seeds can go maybe a half a mile, and then that tree has to grow up and to be mature, and then the seeds go another half a mile. So they can't move very fast, but when the glaciers left, that climate change took place over 10,000 years. So if they had to get from Tennessee all the way up to northern Minnesota in 10,000 years, it's easy. But they wouldn't be able to do a big shift like that in only 100 years. And here's some predictions from the United States Forest Service now. And these cut off at the Canadian border, because the United States pretends Canada isn't there, right? Um, trees don't care whether they live in the United States or Canada, but the Canadians and the Americans do. So anyway, paper birch does grow in Canada. It doesn't really cut off at the border. So this shows the abundance of paper birch right now, and red means very abundant. The blue line is the outer edge of the range. And as you can see, northeastern Minnesota um, and northern Wisconsin have a lot of paper birch. The map on the right shows paper birch, the abundance of paper birch we would predict with a low emission scenario. And you can see much reduced in abundance, and this whole area here would no longer have paper birch. Uh, with the high emission scenario, which again would be the business as usual, paper birch exits the United States completely. So trees will migrate north in response to a warmer climate. Here's another one, sugar maple. Actually, a lot of sugar maple down in Kentucky and Tennessee and Indiana and also northern Wisconsin, um, New York. And here's, again, a low emission scenario, and it's vacating that whole southern part of its range and might move up into the boundary waters. You know, so from the perspective of the boundary waters, it might be a new species coming in as black spruce exits. Um, and so here is again sugar maple. Yellow is where it grows today. The green is the overlap that we think will occur between the range now and the future range. But it turns out you can't assume that trees will survive in that overlap zone. And the reason for that is trees have ecotypes by latitude. Like you can't take a sugar maple from Tennessee and plant it in Duluth. Well, actually, you can do that, but it'll die. I mean, you can't successfully do it. And that's because there are ecotypes by latitude adapted to the local climate. So any one population of trees has nowhere near the tolerance for different climates that the whole species has. And so trees at the southern end 
of the current range have to go to the southern end of the future range and northern end of the current range to the northern end of the future range. So these maples down here have to make it to northern Minnesota and the maples in northern Minnesota need to make it up to Hudson's Bay um, in order to stay in the right climate to which they're adapted. <clears throat> 